So I'm sure you've all heard about the Hawk to a meme at this point. How could you not have? Most memes die out after a month or so, but even after the peak of its popularity, three months later, it's still being kept on life support. Let's be real, the whole spit on that thing wasn't even funny when it was new. Oh, that you, you gotta give him that Hawk to and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's somewhat amusing because of the way she said it, with that southern twang or whatever. Maybe people found it endearing in a way. The woman in question, clearly drunk, she kind of blurted that out, trying to have fun on a night out, a very youthful thing to do. But is it a comedic masterpiece? Will it have you rolling on the floor, wiping away your tears? No. It's something you'd see on TikTok, then have a chuckle with before swiping on to your next brain rot. Then again, maybe I'm just missing out on the relatability aspect. I've never had sex, not for lack of trying. Apparently wanting to keep the bow tie on is quite the turnoff. What I don't get is, isn't that what you do when you're trying to get phlegm out of your system? Like when you... That's what you do when you're trying to get snot out. Why would I want snot on my- Well, we can weep and grovel all day here, but the woman behind it all, Haley Welch, hasn't just let this burst of attention come and go. She's apparently signed up for this talent agency. She's got this whole team around her, right? Attorney, PR firms. She's getting paid exorbitant amounts of money for appearances. According to this USA Today article, an upwards of $25,000 each. She's on all these different podcasts, sang with Zach Bryan, met Shaq O'Neal. She's even got her own little charity fund which she donates to animals in need which is commendable set for life all because she talked about how she gives someone a hand job during an interview now if you know us here at Jetavision you know that on a level we respect the game a bag's a bag and regardless of whether or not we like you in most cases we can respect that you've made it to where you are regardless of how you got there and it's no different with Miss Well she's obviously playing things pretty smart on her end to have gotten this far from 15 minutes of fame we'd go as far as say that she's only really doing what anyone else would do in her situation right if you have this opportunity to drastically improve your quality of life, going from working in a spring factory to rubbing elbows with celebrities and establishing yourself in the entertainment industry, an industry, mind you, which is notoriously hard to establish yourself in, I mean, you're gonna do it, even if the thing that gave you those opportunities in the first place was kind of stupid. On the other hand, this meme is the only thing she's got going for her, and yet it's still being used to push her image after all this time. It's annoying, right? The jokes run its course, but she's still beating us over the head with it. Add that she's not known for anything else. She hasn't created anything else of value. So when you see her on all these podcasts, all these interviews, being uplifted by all these other celebrities, it feels like she's being brute forced into the public eye. Astroturfed. Planted. It feels fake and, well, people don't like that. Which is probably why the response to her latest podcast, Talk Tua with Haley Welch, was received quite negatively at worst, and only enjoyed ironically at best, with most comments being a variation of, I was an alcoholic, abusive, and single father of nine, but as soon as I heard this beautiful and exquisite piece of art, I was flabbergasted. I am now a governor, astronaut, and self-made millionaire. Seriously, the top comments on every single episode is just a variation of this. People are tired, you know? But at Jetavision, we believe that everyone deserves a fair shake. Even media spawned from memes so depleted of humor that they could only be enjoyed ironically. And even then. So we booted up some foxhole, ran some logistics, and prepared ourselves for the primetime podcast that is Talk Tua with Haley Welch. I'll say this, it's not offensively bad. Haley Welch makes for a decent host, good enough to keep an alright flow of conversation with her guests, and a moderate sense of energy for its short runtime. That's honestly all the good we've got to say. Gambling ads. Talk Tua is managed by Better, a media company and fantasy football outlet. Also owned by Jake Ball. I'm gonna make this part really simple. You only need eight correct picks to win a thousand times your money on better picks. All NFL season long. You are eight correct picks away on better picks. From winning a thousand times your money, turn one dollar into a thousand, ten dollars to ten thousand dollars, or even a hundred to a hundred thousand dollars. If you don't know what fantasy football is, it's sports betting. She is literally promoting gambling to her audience. Granted, if we had to take a shot in the dark, we honestly doubt that Haley's doing this because she wants to. More likely, she has no choice to do it because it was a part of an agreement she had with the company. In exchange for money, a studio, and connections, you have to promote our crap. Even still, it's not a good look. You can slap on all the disclaimers you want, I frankly don't care. You're Promoting an activity designed to take advantage of human psychology to get people addicted to being skinned alive financially. Under the guise of, you can make a thousand times your money. Whoa, that's not sketchy at all. And if by some chance she's taking these sponsors on her own volition, I'm... <laughs> 
I don't know what to say, man. But enough moral high horsing. The actual podcast itself is boring. The topics are very shallow, ticky tack stuff. What kind of boys do you like? Then that a man can do for you. You're just like, ah, oh, marry me, you know? Go to therapy. Nope. <laughs> Who's your celebrity crush? And then, um, Matt Rife. Met him in person. Thanks to you, best Melted. wingman ever. Yeah, shout out you, girlfriend. Now I got a pillow of him to sleep with every night. Whatever. What are you like when you're angry? How does different liquor affect your behavior? Uh oh, what's wine do? Wine kind of makes you want to hump the couch a little bit. They spend the entire second episode talking about the meme and how crazy the sudden fame is. Like, we get it, you're famous, you're an internet meme, can you talk about something cool, please? Honestly, the podcast just feels too safe. It's casual conversation, the type you might have with your friends. And maybe this is just a personal preference, but casual conversation really doesn't cut it. Like, maybe for starting or ending off, but at some point, we need some real discussion going on here. Topics that people actually care about, something with some amount of controversy and divisiveness. Let's have a conversation where the participants can really build off each other. Better yet, let's have a person who thinks one way, let's have one person who thinks another, and from that disagreement, maybe you could have an interesting exchange that the viewer could be engaged in. Look, you don't have to discuss the upcoming election or anything, but let's hear what Haley thinks about the world around her, because, well, that's kind of the whole appeal to a podcast centered around a single person. I'm interested in this person. I would like to know what they think about the world. There were probably only two conversations we found ourselves actually engaged in, both in the first episode. One was a conversation about dogs and why they behave the way they do. Because they always give warning, right? They always yeah. give you two chances to back off and change the circumstances, right? If they attack, it means they're fighting for their life and they feel cornered, or they think they're protecting their owner, which is why dog fighting happens. The way that they yeah, train them is, it's really fucked up what they do. So basically they breed the dogs to get, it's basically survive <laughs> of you know the, the kindest yeah, yeah but also the kindest because they're fighting for their owner mm -hmm. right so they're not fighting to kill the other dog they think they're protecting their owner so the ones that are the nicest are the ones that end up fighting and those right oh well we don't know much about dogs so it was interesting to hear from someone who knows a little more about it then there's a discussion about having wealth to give to family members hence create an imbalance which damages relationships down the line yeah. why, why do people though. start That's hating exactly you when you it. give them money what's that why do people start getting mad at you when you give them oh, it's okay. not a loan it never can be a loan because right. then all of a sudden you become the per the Damocles sword hanging over their head, you know, mm -hmm. where every time, you know, you see them, you're a reminder to them of the thing they haven't given you or the embarrassing thing they had asked yeah. for. Where's whatever. my money at, bitch? I think it's a matter of time before they start to hate you because then they start to owe you and then the power dynamic, they gave you a power that you didn't want. You yeah. know what I mean? I just wanted to like help you out with your rent or help you out with their this. And then it's like, well, now what about next month? Now what about next month, next month? And then you become this like you know, authority figure to them. Well, I'm not someone who makes a lot of money. I don't really have to think about stuff like that. So it's interesting to hear the perspective of someone who does and has that experience. More of that, and less talk of whether or not shaving pubic hair leads to attracting pedophiles. Number one, you're gonna attract pedophiles, okay? We're all trying to stop shaving your vagina hair. Don't Dating creeps the longest time, and I didn't realize yeah. I was baiting them by having a bald pussy and Botox, <laughs> of course. I'm sure viewers felt very comfortable during this segment, especially since it happens not even seven minutes in. Seven minutes into the very first episode, they're talking about pubic hair and its relation to pedophilia. Oh, uh, that's really all there is to say about the podcast itself, you know? It's just really boring. Practically impossible to engage with. And then apart from that, you kind of have to look at the host herself, Haley. Here's a general rule about the media. You don't start a podcast to become famous. You start a podcast because you are famous. You start a podcast because you've built a career and you've built a following of people who can respect you. And you can leverage that by giving an audience you've already established a more authentic look at you. And maybe you could argue that Haley's famous, but it's only because of a throwaway meme, you know? There's no career to be interested in, no valuable insight, no intriguing personality or history, which is kind of what you expect from a famous person. Like, that's why and how you get famous. This is literally just a random woman. So the question is, why the hell would I be interested in that? The podcast is centered around someone who doesn't matter. I mean, really, compare someone like her to Joe Rogan. Say what you want about the guy, but he's done a lot. Comedian, actor, UFC commentator, he's been in the industry for a while. Because of that experience, Joe Rogan is a notable figure. So it's easier to take notice and be interested in what he has to say. For better or for worse, he's opinionated, controversial, and he's an interesting person who talks to interesting people. Anything you could say about Mr. Rogan, you cannot say about Haley Welch. I know it's mean, but the truth is this. There is no reason to care about anything this 
this woman has to say. Nothing about her to be interested in. And that's why, from a purely business perspective, this podcast move is a very dicey one, in our opinion. It would probably be better to take your newfound popularity to actually create something that people could be interested in. I don't know what that would be, movies, music, YouTube videos, but the point is, actually make something and give people a reason to care about you. Now, right now, it's too soon to call, but for a time, she was the third most popular podcast on Spotify, and she's still getting decent views on YouTube. Maybe she maintains her growth, maybe she falls off. I mean, she's made it this far, who's to really say? Now, we're willing to throw a lifeline here. We're willing to admit that maybe the show just wasn't made for us. We here at Jetavision, we like hot takes, drama, discussions, debates. I'm, again, not weaponizing suicide. Have you ever sent an unsolicited dick pic to Mango? Okay. Not wait, to wait, Mango. Wait. Nick, kick Nick out of here. <laughs> wait! But maybe most people just enjoy light conversation. That's just the thing about podcasts, you know? Some are made for some people, some are made for others. If we had to put our finger on it, we'd say that this podcast has a specific target audience in mind. And if you'd pardon our rampant misogyny, we'd say it's woman of the Caucasian variety. The guests so far have been women. They all talk about girly stuff in girly ways. Yeah, in case you couldn't tell, the uh, staff here at Jetavision HQ don't get out very much. If you want to appeal to women, that's all right. There's nothing wrong with having a target audience. Well, gee, Mac, doesn't that invalidate your entire review? Who, who is this guy? See, you made an entire review about a podcast only to admit that it didn't really matter at the end because you're not the target audience. Look, it's a review of the talk to a podcast. If you expected it to matter, I really don't know what to say to you in the first place. Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh. To close off, we entered the world of Talk Tua with Haley Welch expecting our thang to get spat on. And let's just say, we left with a dry penis. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a video from the Jetavision. We usually make video game and movie reviews, so if that's something you're interested in, consider checking out our channel. If you want to keep up to date with our latest, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Cheese the Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one.